Chisels, children, and a church combine for busy Tuesday nights here in Coon Rapids. We take a look at how a hobby is staying alive one duck at a time. I was a hunter and I didn't like the decoys that were available on the market for, for taking out hunting. And um, over the years, that's been a goal is to try and make better, make better ducks, so to speak. David Jacobs started carving as a kid and after going away from the hobby, he got back into the groove as an adult. I had kids and through that process of learning to carve, um, my kids had absolutely no interest in carving. My nephews and nieces that lived nearby had no interest in carving, so I thought the same thing. I thought that kids just weren't interested in doing this anymore. Um, found out I was wrong. David wanted to help a new generation of carvers find the hobby, but it wasn't until something was taken away that he really started to give back. The Minnesota Decoy Collectors Association hosted a statewide youth duck carving competition for many years, but due to a perceived lack of interest, it decided to bring the contest to a close. I thought that was absolutely a very sad occurrence. David wouldn't let the competition fly away and brought a brood of young sculptors together. We have some very good carvers this year. It's really fun to, uh, to see them coming out of the woodwork, so to speak. David and his class got the Decoy Carvers Association to revive their youth waterfowl carving contest unofficially for a few years, and soon wooden mallards, golden eyes, and buffleheads would be judged officially once again. That was awesome. Um, they've been very, very good to us. The association even decided to donate money to go toward materials and tools for David's class. For 90 minutes every Tuesday night from October through January, David and a group of kids and adults come to Cross Point Church off Foley Boulevard in Coon Rapids to drill, sand, and whittle decoys for February's competition. It started with Boy Scouts, then church members, but has since brought kids in from several communities through word of mouth. I learned how to use the file and the chisel and how to like cut with the knife. It was a lot of learning. And this is an area where I encourage the kids to use artistic license. That means if they're happy with the way the decoy looks, okay. let's go on to the next part. That's how you think it will look because none of them are the same and I think it's just fun experience and learning. But students take pride in building quality gad walls, shovelers, and canvas backs. You'd have to spend time on it, be careful, and make sure you don't like cut too much out of the wood or the material. Otherwise you can mess it up, but you can always take out more and so you have to be careful. David says a good decoy is durable and its species can be identified before it's painted. These kids are putting together stuff that's a lot better than my first ones. I liked the bodies like when we have the cork and when we file it down. And then I like the painting at the end, this one. My favorite part, um, I would have to say is doing the head and do it, um, just kind of putting it all the way you want it. David says he's come up with different safety measures and instruction to keep most cuts and nicks from happening. As a contractor, my hands are very scarred up. Um, I have to always reassure them that that is not from carving that. We've, we've had a couple of minor cuts, but it's, it's always a concern. But we also have a number of safety um, items. Most of the students don't use the decoys for duck hunting, but aren't willing to sell them either. I'd like to keep it because they're nice and it, I worked hard on them. It's fun to get to use all these tools and make the decoys because then I get, when I'm done with it, I get to see the, what I made and it's just really cool to me. The class is free and David puts the bill for supplies not covered by the Collectors Association. Dave's excitement is, is off the charts. Um, he, I think he's more passionate about this kids group than he is about his own carving, and it shows. Well, it's quite cool that he's put this all together, and it's been a, f a fun time doing all this, so I'd have to appreciate him for doing it. Carving's been a passion of mine for a lot of years. I don't do this professionally. And to see new faces, new kids, a new generation, if you will, uh, carrying this on, I, I, to me it's it's phenomenal. It's nice to see kids not doing computer work or video games. I think it's really good to see them uh, with a hands-on activity and, and doing a craft like this. I think it's a lost thing. Cross Point Church allows the building to be used for whittling between worships without charge. It's a fantastic space. If we didn't have it, I don't think we could put on the, the club. 
Volunteer Matt Gao comes all the way from Zimmerman to help out. I think this is an important skill because the average decoy carver in Minnesota now is age 67 years old. If we can get a handful of them to continue as they grow older, then we'll just keep that tradition alive. But I like to see the satisfaction of me actually finishing it and seeing it. While other kids just sit home after school and sit on their phones. David says he's also filling a void after middle schools in the Anoka Hennepin School District stopped offering woodshop classes. Yeah, I think people might think it's weird to go to like a duck carving class, but I think it's pretty fun. To see them enthusiastic about doing it just makes it worth coming here. I'm able to share two passions. I, love, I like working with kids and I love carving, so I'm able to share the two together. You get to meet some people, have some fun, and then it also can develop a hobby sometimes, which can fill up your time for fun. The Youth Decoy Carving Competition takes place February 4th in Bloomington. To join the carving group next fall, give David Jacobs a call.